I want to start today with a photo. I want to show you guys a photo. Uh, but before I show you the photo, I have to warn you that it is horrifying. Oh, that's not the reaction I expected. Maybe you don't realize that this photo is horrifying, so let me explain. Um, I came across this photo actually a couple days ago. I was looking for a picture in Getty Images to put atop one of my articles about Hurricane Florence, which, as you probably know, just hit North and South Carolina, still flooding there. And uh, I have covered a lot of hurricanes in my life as an environmental journalist. I've seen a lot of pictures, but when I saw this one, I was like, no. The caption read that this guy's name is Fred. And Fred, after a long day of quote unquote, cleaning up debris around his house, he decided to cool off by jumping off a bridge into the Rockfish Creek, which had just overflowed its banks. So Fred here is swimming in straight up flood water. Now I'm sitting there looking at this and going, no, Fred, why would you do this? And so that's why I'm here today is to tell you uh, what Fred didn't, and that is that this flood water, and most flood water that comes after a hurricane, it's full of human poop. I mean, seriously, it's, it's full of human poop. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to my TED talk. <laughs> um, we don't actually know how much human poop is in the Hurricane Florence flood water, which is actually still standing in some parts of North and South Carolina today. Um, but we do have some preliminary reports, and we're going to get more in the coming days. But we know, that, we know that at least a million gallons of sewage has been released into the environment because of this storm. Uh, that is not surprising to me at all, because the fact is that most of the systems that are supposed to handle our business in the United States, uh, they cannot handle it when there is a lot of rain. And Hurricane Florence produced a lot of rain. Um, in some areas in North Carolina, 36 inches of rainfall fell from Hurricane Florence. That is the rainiest hurricane to ever hit the Carolinas, and it's the eighth rainiest hurricane to ever hit the contiguous United States. But the thing is, you don't need a big rainstorm like this to overwhelm and overflow a sewage system. Uh, I want you to look at this chart. This is put together uh, by the nonprofit research group Climate Central. It is the biggest sewage spills uh, from the year 2015 to 2016. On the left, overflow volume, you'll see the amount of sewage. On the right, you'll see the rain amount. So lots of sewage, not a lot of rain. Um, <laughs> but it, it really is the hurricanes that tend to be the true shit storms pun intended. Um, and I like to use Hurricane Irma as an example because that's the hurricane where I figured this out, or I really started to figure it out. Um, hurricane Irma was a pretty big storm. You'll remember it last, uh, last year, we had three big hurricanes, Harvey, Irma, Maria. Irma was the one that really affected Florida. And it wasn't a huge rainfall event, I mean, at least compared to Florence. Uh, rainfall totals of about 10 to 15 inches were common across the state. That's uh, the purple there shows you that it's like 10, that, that's where 10 to 15 inches fell. We also had about four separate storm surge events from Florida, uh, from Hurricane Irma in Florida. Now that means that the sea level rapidly rose, the winds from the hurricane took uh, the waves and pushed them inland. So this happened in four different areas. Basically, it's a lot of opportunities for a lot of water to get into a lot of sewage systems and overwhelm and overflow them. And boy, did this water take those opportunities. Um, in the wake of Hurricane Irma, actually just a couple days after it passed, I decided, I was looking for a story, and I decided I was going to look at the sewage spill reports uh, submitted to the Florida Department of Environmental Protection. And I found some gross stuff, guys, <laughs> really. Uh, I found uh, you know, individual reports. I found a six million gallon spill uh, in Miami, some of which got into a state aquatic preserve. I found a two million gallon spill from literally one manhole 
north of uh, Orlando. In North Carolina, you'll, the reason there's still floodwaters on the ground is because the rivers overflowed. So sewage gets into a receiving water body. That's why the floodwaters full of poop. Well, I analyzed, in just a couple days after the storm, Irma, um, 113 sewage spill reports, totaling about at least 28 million gallons of waste containing human fecal matter spilled all over the state. And that's like a very, very, uh, it's a very low estimate because at least 43 out of the 113 reports I analyzed cited an ongoing or unknown amount of sewage spilled. It wasn't enough that Irma covered Florida with flood water. That flood water was festering. So are you grossed out enough yet? Well, too bad, I'm not done. <laughs> uh, so Hurricane Sandy, 28 million sounds like a lot. Hurricane Sandy, uh, the big storm that hit New York and New Jersey in 2012, that dumped about 10 billion gallons of sewage out of our systems all over the two states. 10 billion gallons. That's mind blowing. When the New York Times reported on this, they, to put it in perspective, they said that um, 10 billion gallons of sewage released would be like covering Central Park in a 41 foot pile of sludge. Obviously we don't want this. I, I probably, do I have to explain to you guys why we don't want this? Um, I mean, just in case, you're like, what's the problem? Um, there's a problem, we don't want this. Sewage spills are wastewater that we've put down our toilets, and these things produce bacteria. So when they get into floodwaters or to receiving waters that might be drinking water systems, it's bacteria, it's pathogens, it's parasites, it's viruses. They make gastrointestinal problems if you are exposed to them. Um, it might not seem like a big deal to get diarrhea or something, but I promise you that this is a big deal. If you look in other countries that don't have the advanced, mostly working sewage systems that we have, the diseases and gastrointestinal problems caused by these bacteria, by poor sewage systems, is among the leading causes of death. According to the EPA, every year we see about 23,000 to 75,000 overflows from sanitary sewage systems, which is only one of about three types of sewage systems we have. And so that's 23,000 to 75,000 overflows. And from those overflows alone, we see about 3 billion to 10 billion gallons of sewage overflowed uh, into floodwaters receiving waters environment every single year. That's just one system. A recent study by the American Society of Civil Engineers found that over the course of all of our sewage systems, um, about 900 billion gallons of sewage are spilled every single year. And if we want to put that in the Central Park perspective, that's a 3,700 3, foot mountain of shit covering Central Park. So why is this happening? Over in more than 700 communities across the United States, we have something called a combined sewer system. Uh, here you'll see, you know, that's a lot of New York. Uh, New York City is, is part of that. Um, lots of Great Lakes communities, but also our really old cities, San Francisco, Memphis, Atlanta. They're some of our oldest underground sewage systems, and these are causing most of our problems. Um, so this is a combined sewage system in dry weather. You'll see how they work, uh, sort of the stuff you flush down the toilet on the left goes down into the sewer, down pipes in the sewer, but then so does anything that the storm drains, so anything that's running off from the street, which would be rain. Um, and even on like fine rainy days, like little rainy days, it's fine, it, it all goes and it goes, that all combines and then it goes, it travels to the wastewater treatment plant where it gets sanitized and treated, released back in the environment, everything's cool. Um, wet weather, that's not what happens. As you can see, the waste combines with the rainwater, and then it, there's, it backs up. There's, it can't flow to the wastewater treatment plant. So it just goes straight into receiving waters. Some of these receiving waters are the water that we get our drinking water from. And yeah, it goes through 
treatment too, but ugh, it's not good. Um, also, that's the water that would be a flood water. So this is New York City also. If you see a puddle after a big rainstorm, just avoid it, I would say. Um, but it's <laughs> <is> my recommendation. <laughs> These are the source of a lot of our problems. Um, they're not the source of all of our problems, as you'll see in, in Florida. If you look back at the map in Florida and North Carolina, they don't have those systems. Oh, by the way, those systems were designed uh, before the modern toilet was even invented. So that's why they don't work. They just weren't designed for the types of cities that we live in right now with so many people. The type of sewage systems uh, underground are sanitary sewer systems. They, in those systems, it's just sewage. There's no rainwater that's supposed to get into them, unfortunately. They do because most of them are super old, like really old, way too old, past their usable lifespan, should have been replaced a long time ago, haven't been. Uh, they leak, they, you know, water gets into them, they leak, they crack, there's faulty joints, there's spills. Um, and that's about 80% of the United States combined sewage systems and uh, and these sanitary sewer systems. Now, 20% of people in the United States use septic tanks, and those people are not off the hook. Looking at you guys, Southampton. Um, <laughs> a recent report, 2017 report in Governing Magazine, found that all, almost all of the 365,000 septic tanks across Suffolk County, almost all of them are too old and they're leaking all the time into the environment. So that's not a hurricane problem per se, but it does mean that your floodwaters are also potentially contaminated every time a hurricane hits here. And I heard that hurricanes hit here as well. The point is that the majority of our sewage infrastructure, which we take for granted, don't think about every day, is outdated. It is not designed to handle what we're putting into it and it is too old <laughs> to handle what we're putting into it. So what do we do? Well, actually, the answer is really easy. Um, we just need to update our sewage systems. I mean, it's not like we don't know how to do it. Engineers know how to do it. Uh, it's just, it's just been the money to do it. Um, and the EPA estimates that in order to bring all of our sewage infrastructure around the world up to par, we need to invest collectively over state, local, federal governments, $271 billion. Climate change is making storms rainier. You know, climate scientists are certain about a lot of things and uncertain a lot of things about a lot of things. They're certain that climate change is happening, uh, that it's real, that it's human caused, and that it's harmful. Uh, they don't know exactly what it's going to do or how much it's going to warm. But one of the things that they do know for sure is that climate change makes rainstorms rainier. And that's because it's basic physics. Uh, when there's more heat in the atmosphere, the atmosphere is able to hold more moisture. So during rainstorms, the, it is more rainfall can fall. And then they also know for sure that storm surge during storms is going to get worse because the sea level is rising. Uh, and higher seas means bigger waves. Basic physics stuff, we know this. So we know that we need to fortify our sewage infrastructure, not just for how we're living right now, but the future that we're creating uh, for future generations. So I'm saying like, I don't know, $500 billion, let's say. So I know a lot of people will hear that number and think to themselves, okay, so you're saying that there's nothing that we can do because nobody's gonna, invest $500 billion. We can't even get $10 million for a climate science program from the EPA, right? So good luck. Um, I think that that's wrong. I think that even in this political climate, we can do something about this and we can achieve this funding. And I think it requires something really, it starts with something really simple, which is just talking very frankly and very grossly about the alternative of what's going to happen if we don't do it. Um, <laughs> so, I look at sewage spill coverage a lot. I read about them a lot. It's a nice hobby of mine, obviously. Um, and when I do, I see a lot of headlines that look like this. Lane washes wastewater into Ukala Gulch. Waste discharges are unacceptable. A sewage spill, it highlights infrastructure. I mean, would you click on any of these? Like, in, in the world that we live in right now where everything is wackadoodle, 
Would, would this catch your attention? I mean, it wouldn't catch my attention. I only click on it because I'm looking for it. Um, <laughs> so when I decided to write about Hurricane Irma and those DEP reports of sewage spills, I decided to take a different approach because I wanted people to know about this. I wanted them to read about it. So I did this headline. <laughs> Man, did this article do well. Oh my god. <laughs> so many people read this article. It was among the most popular articles on my website the entire year, and I was not expecting that. And you know, I think it's because of the content of the article, for sure. I, I did a good job. Um, but I also, I also think it was because of the headline. Um, this is a very stark and startling headline. But, and I hope that you realize after this talk that I, uh, that's not, I'm not sens sensationalizing this. Like, I'm not, <laughs> it's not an exaggeration. This is a poop nightmare. Hurricane Sandy was a poop nightmare, and there's going to be more poop nightmares. Like, we have to talk about it this way, uh, because that's what it is. And talking about it this way, which is the truth, is the only way that this is ever going to become a political issue. And this isn't a political issue right now, you know? Um, we need this to become a political issue because sewage infrastructure funding is public funding. It is taxpayer money that pays for it. So it is politicians that allocate that money, local, state, federal level, doesn't matter, everywhere. But when was the last time you heard somebody at a town hall meeting raise their hand and say, Senator Ted Cruz, uh, what are you going to do about all the poop everywhere? You know, it's, when have you ever heard a reporter ask that question? I, I haven't. Maybe I haven't done enough. I think we all aren't talking about this enough. So it requires being frank and having these discussions and asking our politicians to do something about it. Now, when we do ask our po politicians to do this and it does start to become a political issue, it's still going to be a really hard fight. What we have to worry about is changing how we talk about this. So no more wastewater. No more sewage. No more weird, tiptoey language. I want you to talk to your friends about when you see a puddle and flood water. I want you to say, did you know there's poop in that? There's a lot of poop in that. And people will be like, what? And then, yeah, you just talk about that. Make them care about it. And if I can ask you guys to do one thing today, it would be to do what Rose George said in her 2013 TED Talk on poop problems around the world. Uh, which is that we have to talk shit because our health and our children's health and Fred's health depends on it. Thank you. <laughs>